Not too long ago, the comms prepper reviewed a SDR unit called RTL SDR Plus, which is available on the Radio Oddity site. The selling point, or one of the selling points of this unit, is that it tunes both VHF and HF. Uh, the comms prepper demonstrated it working on VHF uh, tuning FM stations. He went on to other projects, leaving HF to me. In the meantime, uh, some of his subscribers had indicated that they were having difficulty getting it set up in HF, so I'd like to address that today. I think there are some good reasons for that, but the good news is it works, and when it works, it works fantastically. So we'll talk about uh, how to set it up, what's inside the unit, and then some of the applications. I think some of the confusion comes from the Radio Oddity website itself. Towards the top of the page, there's a sentence that reads, cannot be used to receive HF signal band. I know that threw a few people. That sentence is referring to the small antenna that comes with the unit. Uh, that antenna is really meant for VHF use and will not be at all efficient on HF. Below it, it says, to achieve best effect, you need to connect an HF antenna, such as long wire, random wire, dipole, etc. So it's just a matter that you have to use the right antenna connected up to the HF port if you're going to do HF. Key consideration in setting up software that will upconvert the HF signal into the VHF range that the uh, SDR dongle can normally tune is the offset frequency of the local oscillator. On the website, under the, under the specifications, it says that the local oscillator for HF conversion is 40 MHz. A little bit lower on the website, as they're giving examples of how to set up software for the HD SDR package, again, they reference a uh, upconverter offset frequency of 40 MHz. And I think I know where that parameter of 40 megahertz comes from. When this unit was originally produced by Bravo Alpha 5 Sierra Bravo Alpha uh, in China, he designed it around a 40 megahertz local oscillator. Well, apparently there have been multiple design iterations, and the current unit is produced around a 100 megahertz local oscillator. According to the Radio Oddity website, about halfway down, as they're describing setup to use the software package SDR Sharp. They say to enter in a shift frequency of minus uh, 100 million, and they write it uh, with dots rather than commas, uh, sort of in the French style rather than the American style, but the intent is that th that number represents 100 megahertz. So which is it, 40 megahertz or 100 megahertz? When you've got a lot of things to play around with trying to set up the software, uh, you want to bring down the number of variables. So we can just look at the board directly and figure out you know what is the local oscillator so as long as we're looking at the board here's a picture of it I want to point out a couple items on it uh, just for background sake so to start with we're looking at the top of the board here's the bottom not very much going on on that side uh, the two SMA connectors at one end and the uh, micro USB connection and a switch at the other end Back to the top of the board, you'll note that there is a subboard embedded in the larger board. And if I outline it, it looks a lot like a USB dongle. And in fact, that's definitely what it is. It's pretty clear that he's taken one of those $20-$25 VHF-only dongles and embedded it in an upconverter board. And a little more proof for this is at the one end, there, there are several connections by that big capacitor. And if you trace those connections, they run right over to that uh, USB micro port on the right side. So that's what's going on. So if that's the case, then we would expect that all the things normally found on one of those dongles would be in that subboard, uh, starting with the RTL283U chip itself which is a digital TV tuner chip in its you know earlier life plus a USB 2.0 interface and it's the larger of the two chips it's a 48 pin quad flat pack there are no data sheets available on the net for this uh, it's proprietary the other chip that's on it a slightly smaller one uh, it's a 24 pin uh, quad flat pack is the R820T and uh, it's a high performance low power advanced digital TV silicon tuner so there are some newer uh, models out that have a later version of the chip, uh, but eff effectively compatible in every other way, the uh, R820T2. Uh, so those two uh, chips are doing uh, the majority of the work. And these dongles typically have a range of 100 kilohertz to uh, 1.766 gigahertz, uh, which 
again are the parameters that are advertised for the RTL SDR plus. To come back to the central question, what is the local oscillator frequency for the up converter? There are two crystal oscillators on board. There's a small one on the subboard and there's a larger one on the up converter board. So it must be the one on the up converter board that we're we're interested in. A little magnification solves the question. It's 100 megahertz and the oscilloscope verifies that. So that's the value that we should be putting into our software uh, for the up converter. The 40 megahertz uh, is an older model and no longer relevant. Another source of confusion uh, that people have mentioned to me is documents on the web that relate to an earlier design uh, by the same designer, BA5SBA. He initially marketed a kit shown here, and, and you can see the dongle that they cannibalize uh, for the subboard. This kit relied on a different principle. Rather than quadrature sampling, it used uh, direct sampling of the radio signal. Uh, either the I or the Q would be fed directly to the RTL-283 chip, bypassing the tuner. And there are a number of technical reasons that this is an inferior approach, uh, one of them being passive signal loss, uh, and another one being the low sample rate. As you can see, the packaging is very similar to the RTL-SDR+. So as previously mentioned by the comms prepper, uh, installation begins with downloading of the software SDR Sharp. Uh, there are other packages and I'm sure they work fine, but this is the most uh, widely used and most supported package available. So I've highlighted the button that you click in order to download it. Beyond that, uh, there are a number of guides uh, about how to install the package. The SDR Sharp website actually is probably not the best place to look. There's a good guide on rtlsdr.com. There's another one on atuk.com. And finally, tylerwatt12.com. Uh, it's worth reading or at least perusing uh, the three of them uh, to distill down the common points. But really, it's very straightforward as an install. The only thing that's a little bit funky about it is needing to install a Zadig uh, that's a Z-A-D-I-G driver uh, for each USB port that you'll use the device on. So the simple thing to do is just put it on one USB port and keep it there rather than move it around. Uh, so that driver has to be installed before the SDR uh, Sharp software is installed. And then I'd recommend doing, uh, as the comms prepper did, and getting it working on FM. Find, for example, a commercial station or a ham station or, if you're in North America, a NOAA weather radio and uh, work out the general principles that way. And that way you'll know that you've got the unit powered, you're getting signals in, and basically things are working. This is the screen that you see when you launch. Uh, there's no sound to begin with uh, because you haven't enabled it yet. So for orientation, there's some icons in the upper left-hand corner. I'll explain what they mean in just a second. One of them is obvious, the volume control next to that speaker, and to the right of that, the frequency uh, that you want to dial in, and that'll be the center frequency that you're listening to, and that's in Hertz. So for setup sake, the first item uh, that you want to look at on the left-hand side, and these are all drop-down tabs, uh, is source and here you want to select our RTL SDR USB. Uh, you could select other radios, you could select read from a file, but we want to read from the USB port. Next tab down is called radio and you can see a few different modes listed there, FM, sideband, CW and so on. Uh, probably put it on sideband to start off with, doesn't really matter. But the next one down is critical. This is the local oscillator offset frequency. Uh, so you want to check the shift box and then enter minus 100 million, uh, including the commas, in that box to the right. The next one down is filter, and honestly, I don't hear a lot of difference between the filters. I think I normally keep it on Blackman Harris 4 because it's got two names, and I figure two names is better than one name. Um, underneath that, bandwidth and order for the filter. Uh, bandwidth is self-evident and as you change modes it'll change correspondingly so set it to something reasonable so if you're on sideband set it to around 3000 or so to be able to hear a nice uh, wide signal order again changes with band if you're at a loss type in 400 or 500 uh, not a lot of difference uh, for small uh, gradations there 
and CW shift applies to CW. Uh, continuing down, uh, step size, you know, that's a matter of, of how, how large you want the gradations to be uh, for tuning. But then we hit one more important one, uh, correct IQ. You should check this box. Uh, it gets rid of a lot of birdies that appear in the signal. And this is part of uh, SDR magic that uh, fixes some imbalances between the I and the Q signals or uh, either uh, amplitude variances or phase variances uh, and, and optimizes to null out uh, the signals. So that, that establishes the correct relationship between them and you don't get those uh, spurious signals showing up on your display. So that's an important one uh, to check. Swapping I and Q uh, isn't going to help here, so don't check that box. So that's the basics uh, to set up uh, the local oscillator offset, which will now take the HF signal and put it up in the range that the SDR dongle can normally tune. Clicking the gear brings up additional settings. Uh, the top one device is already specified, you can't change it. Sample rate is basically data throughput, and here you're limited both by the chip and by the USB connection. Uh, in principle, the maximum sample rate is something like 3.2 megasamples per second, but that is an unstable setting, and uh, probably the maximum that you can use without dropping samples is 2.4 uh, megasamples per second. I use 2.048 to provide a little bit of uh, headroom. Uh, the sampling mode is quadrature by definition, and then beneath that uh, there are some settings related to gain. So you could, related to those two chips that we saw on the dongle part, part of the board, you can use the gain control of either the uh, tuner chip or the RTL chip. I prefer to set it manually, so don't check either of them, and the RF gain control will be uh, at your disposal. And it's important to set the RF gain not too high because uh, the front end of the receiver can overload uh, and that may take the form of broadcast uh, interference uh, or just uh, wide noise over your signal and you'll lose what you're trying to get. So somewhere around halfway seems to work for me. I mean, it's gonna relate to band conditions in the same way that you would tweak the RF gain up and down on your radio, do so here. And it really takes a bit of, uh, you know, artwork uh, to get the signal where you want it. You'll find that when you're operating, setting the gain is one parameter. And then on the right-hand side, there are a few items related to how, how much you want the display expanded in terms of uh, frequency domain, how much you want it in terms of uh, amplitude, uh, how much uh, gradation you want in contrast uh, between background signal uh, and noise. Um, so those things are kind of things that you play with when it's live. So when you're setting it up, just set the RF gain about halfway up. Uh, the other item, frequency correction, leave alone for now. The hamburger button in the upper left hand corner takes the program into full screen mode. So if suddenly you, you've lost all your menus on the left side, that's what you've hit. Hit it again and you'll get your menus back. At this point, you could press the play button, and you should hear some at least static. And the spectral display should start uh, moving, and the waterfall should st start scrolling. Uh, if you don't hear anything, it might be that your audio output is not set up right. So under the audio tab, make sure that the output is something reasonable. I have, uh, for example, USB headphones, so that had to be selected in the program. Uh, alternatively, there may be built-in speakers or outboard speakers or a sound card or something. Set that up appropriately. When you first set up for HF, it's important to tune a segment of the spectrum that has some known activity. So here's the 20 meter band. The PSK31 segment was really hopping this evening and this is what it looked like in Ham Radio Deluxe, tuned on a regular radio, my Kenwood TS450. Here's the same thing using the RTL SDR Plus. Don't try to compare the sound because the way it was captured, uh, they're not com comparable. Uh, but I guess one thing to notice is that when you're zoomed in this much into a narrow band of spectrum, the signal really pixelates. And this is because the bins can only be uh, so small. The RTL SDR Plus has an 8-bit ADC, so the resolution is somewhat limited.
this technology really comes into its own when you want to look across a wide swath of bandwidth all at once. If you're an amateur radio operator, you're used to working within a slice of the HF spectrum, the amateur allocation, but you have to remember that there are government services, commercial, and as shown here, international broadcast as well. Speaking of amateur radio applications, here's an example where the bandwidth has been brought really narrow uh, just to pull out a Morse code signal. I know the comms prepper loves digital, so here's some HF packets. And back to uh, single sideband. This clip demonstrates how the SDR can focus down on one sideband signal and with everything set correctly have really minimal background. At this point we're not quite finished. There's still the matter of frequency calibration to make sure that the number that appears on the dial really reflects the frequency that you're listening to. Now to carry this out you're going to need some kind of frequency standard. It could be an on-air standard like WWV or CHU Canada or you can make your own as I've done setting up my FT817 to transmit at minimal power into a dummy load. The trick now is to tune the reference signal and keep it centered in the display and at the same time tweak the shift frequency in small increments until the point that the dial frequency matches the reference frequency. So in this case we're trying to get it to read uh, 14305 just like we're transmitting on the FT817. Here's the calibrated frequency with a dial reading exactly 14305 and a correction of 1790 hertz. So congratulations, if you've gotten to this step you now have a uh, fully operational RTL SDR Plus and can go out and explore the airwaves. One last bit of commentary, the RTL SDR Plus is a pretty economic unit. If you were to go the other route of getting a separate RTL dongle for UHF VHF and then wanted to add HF capability, you would have to get another uh, up converter somewhere. You could build it or, or you could buy one. And a common one that you see on the web is the Hammett Up up converter. And that runs something like $70 or $80 uh, plus a case plus cables. Uh, and then you have to integrate it. So the RTL SDR Plus is everything in one package. And it's a small package. You can easily throw it into your go kit and, as they say, have complete informational awareness from DC to daylight uh, at your fingertips. So I think it's a real winner.